Holy crap, the Nerf Destiny Yallerhorn is finally here. Or is it Gallerhorn? I don't know because I've clicked on YouTube videos with millions of views and even they say Gallerhorn. So to tick everybody off, let's just call it the G-Horn. The Nerf Destiny 2 G-Horn is one of the biggest, most expensive blasters in the entirety of Nerf. With its initial pre-order window requiring you to have bought DLC for Destiny 2 and unlocking the weapon in-game for your chance to get first dibs at this blaster pre-order. For $185 for the blaster, so if you're not a fan of Destiny 2, why the heck would you even look at this thing? Well, it's a big frick-off rocket launcher that is also a shell-fed three-shot mega dart shotgun. And that's the reason why I want to take a look at it. It should be noted that not only do you get the massive blaster itself, but you also get a code for some in-game items to make the in-game version of the G-Horn look like the Nerf one, which is a pretty cool touch. And I have managed to avoid all the spoilers so far about this thing. Mine took a little bit too long to get here, but I think that's because I ordered two. And special thanks to a certain Chadwick in my life, who is a Destiny fanboy. And, and, and the reason why I even have access to this thing. So right off the bat, there are four shells here. And it looks like the priming handle and the scope is what just fell out of the box. And like a shield piece with a beautiful sticker on it. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of blaster. a lot of plastic it is heavy oh my goodness see that's the thing with this blaster it doesn't even matter how good it is there's really nothing else like this this does appear to be a one-way operation there are tabs here that clip in to the back of the rocket launcher and once that goes on it's not really meant to come off although i don't think it would be that difficult to remove it and you could in fact shave down these tabs so it could be a friction fit removal. This is all just empty plastic. It is a gigantic cylinder that is strictly for cosmetic appearances. Oh. <laughs> this sight scope thing that also has a battery tray on it and an on off switch also appears to only snap in one time and isn't supposed to be removed. <sighs> right here, we've got our shells. We've got three Mega Dart shells. And on top of that, a fourth shell I didn't know was gonna be with the blaster. That is just a normal Elite Dart shell. I don't remember this ever being mentioned. That's kind of a cool surprise. I also wanna point out that if you felt like you missed this blaster because it was a limited pre-order thing, Right before I shot this video, I checked. You can, in fact, still add this to your cart on the Bungie web store. And I even attempted to check out, not that I needed to buy another one. So I think at the moment, at the time you're watching this video, you can still purchase this blaster, but that might not be for very long. Last but not least, we got the foregrip here and a bag containing a bunch of mega darts. Nope, spoke too soon. The elite darts were hiding inside of the mega dart. That's a very old school looking nerf dart. I love it. And much like every other attachment with this blaster, it looks like this foregrip is supposed to lock into place and isn't meant to be removable, so... Last but not least, this piece right here is actually meant to go on the site itself. Yeah, this is, this, this is the coolest thing ever. The shells are interesting to say the least. They, uh, they have a lot of vent holes on them. These shells are not going to be optimal for performance or distance in any way, I, which tells me that the G-Horn itself probably has a lot of airflow to it, and it would need a good amount of airflow to fire three of these suckers any amount of distance at one time. But you just load up the shell with three Mega Darts, which is about the most fun thing I can imagine Nerf doing. And unfortunately, there's a little tab here on the side, which completely ruins it. I'm guessing that's to make sure that the shell does stay 
in the right position for it to fire all the darts. Hello everyone, Editing Walcom here. I just wanted to point something out on this thought because these shells have this kind of guiding locking tooth on them, which does have some kind of spring assisted ejection, although it doesn't really eject out the shells, it just kind of bumps them loose a little bit. However, the blaster itself, while it does have spots where it's supposed to seal behind the three darts does not feature any kind of air restrictor. That means that this blaster will not fire if you only load one dart into it, but that also means the positioning of the shell is practically pointless and and since there's no air restrictor, there's no reason for Nerf to be wary about the position of the shell. They just kind of designed it like this to design it like this and that seems incredibly stupid to me. Which is uh that's that's a disappointing thing. Yep, the top of the chamber actually has a spot for the shell. And it looks like some form of shell ejection. Now, why is it my... Oh, I, I, I think I primed this thing. What an interesting mechanic. That performance was not the best. It's unfortunately stock nerf. I'm sure this thing has some mod potential. I'm, I'm fairly certain of that. If anything, just slightly better designed shells, which, you know, could be 3D printed, would affect that performance greatly. But the actual manual of arms here is to push the whole chamber forward so it releases that door. Load your shell in and then push it down. Then you could prime the entire thing backwards, fire it, and when you push it forward, you can redo the loading process. Which, to be fair, is somewhat similar to how it reloads in the game. Sadly, due to the fact that the scope is a separate unit that has an on-off switch, it doesn't interact with the rest of the blaster in any way, it's safe to assume that the only thing the scope is going to do with two AA batteries is light a single LED in the reticle. Yep, it's, it's a single red LED. that pretty good maybe elite darts is where it's at surprisingly enough while this blaster is exceptionally heavy the grip itself is very comfortable i like the tube stock the sight works especially even at a distance although it's a fogged up piece of plastic you're not really going to be aiming with it and the foregrip lever thing here also works pretty darn good. It's not the most comfortable angle to hold something at. And there is a lot of beautiful detail and greebling on this blaster that just makes it fantastic to look at. But the G-Horn here is unlike anything else we really have in the hobby right now. Not only do we not often get blasters this big and bulky and intimidating looking, but it's a shell-fed Mega Dart shotgun on top of that, which Hasbro has never done. All of this locked behind a Nerf limited release and an eye-watering $185. But this does tickle the kind of thing that I want to see from Nerf limited, because even if I didn't have a huge interest in Destiny, I might want a big, huge rocket launcher, and also I might want a three dart shell fed mega dart firing shotgun. On top of something that's gonna look absolutely fantastic on display. Yes, it doesn't match the color scheme of the one in the game, but I would also make the argument that they give you a skin when you buy this to make the one in the game look like the nerf one. Performance is a mixed bag. It's not the greatest, but it's on par with what you'd expect from stock Nerf. However, just looking at that shell, I can tell that with a little bit more design, a 3D printer, you can make a far more efficient shell that should impart a lot more velocity to the dart. And that's not even covering the fact that this could also have some internal modification done to make it shoot a little bit harder. And even beyond all that, it shoots mega darts, three of them. It's not exactly meant to be a sniper rifle. So the G-Horn has something for everybody, but is it worth $185? And for that, I don't really think so, but it's not missing that mark by much. My main complaint with this is it needs a stand. It needs either a stand or even like a stand that has the option to be put on a wall for a wall display thing, because look at this thing. You'd want to put this on display and for just, and considering they just need to add a little bit more plastic to the box uh, after all they've got right here, I don't think that's a lot to ask for this price.
If I want to really nitpick, yeah, the loading mechanism is a little clumsy. This whole top section wobbles and I feel like I'm gonna break it. And that is something that I would be worried about trying to actually use this thing in a battle. That could just shear off for all I know. I haven't used it enough and I won't have the time to use it enough to get this review out to really test this mechanism. And honestly, I feel like they could go overkill with the performance, like putting an air tank and a compressor back here for that price tag and really up that distance because it's not like they're selling this thing on store shelves. But it's huge. It is menacing. It is actually really interesting to reload and visually interesting to play with. And for that, I can give it a pretty solid recommendation. If you wanted two of the three things that the Yowler Horn does really effectively, it would be worth that price tag to you, although you are gonna be paying a bit of a premium. But surprisingly enough, in my own hypocritical way, I feel like this is worth it, even though I'm not that big of a fan of Destiny or the G-Horn itself. I just like big, huge, ridiculous things that are shotguns. Speaking of spades, maybe we can get a competent ace of spades done. Hmm, I like my hand cannons, please. Or Hawkmoon, or the last word. Uh, you know, the cool things. Not Thorn. I don't really like Thorn. Thorn. Thorn wasn't fun to play against. My least favorite part is the fact that you have to manually push down the thing to fire it, which I feel like there should have been something in here that when you're priming it back, automatically closes. I, that seems so easy to me. I don't know why that wasn't done, which is a huge disappointment to me, but overall, it's a very minor nitpick.